Howdy friends, my name is Daniel, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. Today's tutorial is a little bit of a beast. I mean, maybe the term beast is more derogatory. Um, it's more of a big American party! Yay! Everybody disco dancing! Lots of fun, good time for all! <laughs> So in the past videos in this short series, we learned how to connect our headsets to our computers, set up Unity, build worlds, and walk around in them. And today we're gonna interact with items, create materials, build prefabs, and there's a little bit of a bonus at the end relating to UI. Who knows? Well, I know. There is, so stick around and watch it. Um, so if you like this kind of material, like, subscribe, and all that and let's not around anymore, and let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back. So I wanted to start today's tutorial by starting off in XR. So the reason why I wanted to start off in XR because I wanted to show you that we kind of have a XR rig that can interact with things right off the bat, which are these kind of ray interactors. But for the sake of getting you more comfortable with the XR world, we're gonna rebuild the XR origin really fast. So if you need to slow down, we go back to the existing tutorial. And if you wanna get better at creating a locomotion system and really understanding your XR rig, Let's continue and then we'll dive into what interactors and interactables are. Cool. Let's do it. Okay. So we're back now um, in Unity and to start off, as I stated before, we're going to start fresh with a new XR origin to get everyone kind of used to it and show more effective ways of building them. So it's like it's hit delete over here under our hierarchy of XR origin and we're going to right click. We're going to hit XR. And we're gonna hit XR Origin. Last time we hit XR Origin Action Base, but today we're gonna hit XR Origin. So we're gonna click that and let's zero it out, especially on the Y axis. And there's no locomotion system, there's no left hand and right hand. We're gonna build those out from scratch. So let's go to XR Origin and add two components. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna put Input Action Manager. And then we're gonna go to Samples, XR Interaction Toolkit. 20.1 starter assets and then XRI default input actions. Let's click our XR origin and let's drag that over action assets. Now let's do character controller, put it on the Y axis of one. So now we're on the Y, now we're on top of the ground. It changes the 0.4. Cool. That's all we really need to do to for um, XR origins at this point. Now let's add a locomotion system. So let's go to camera offset and let's go to create empty. Or we're just gonna call this locomotion. Now we have locomotion selected. We're gonna hit add component, locomotion system. Then um, XR origin, let's drag this over. Now let's type in continuous. Make sure that's on the left hand. We're going to change the speed to 10. Um, the locomotion system, we're just drag this from the above down. And then we're going to add continuous trim provider. I'm going to change this to around 100. I personally like that. I'm a speed freak. Um, this is going to be in the right hand. And let's bring in this locomotion system. And then finally, let's add to character controller driver. And then we're going to drag the continuous move provider into lo the locomotion provider, change the height from one, from zero to one, max height to two. Now our locomotion system is all set up. Cool. Now, if we put our headset on right now, we can walk around, but we would have no arms. And that brings me into the topic of interactors versus interactables. Interactors are essentially our hands and interactables are objects. And there's two real big forms of interactors. There are direct interactors, which is hands, for instance, and then there are like ray interactors, which is the rays that shoot out of your hands and you can grab things from distances. Today, we're gonna start off by creating some direct interactors. And today we're gonna be using some of the things that come with XR Interaction Toolkit. So instead of creating a left hand and right hand from empties, kind of like we did with Locomotion, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to Camera Offset, right click, we're gonna to go to XR, and we're gonna go Direct Interactor. And we'll call this Right Hand Direct. And we're gonna duplicate this. And we're gonna call this one, oops. And we're gonna call this one, oops. left hand direct. Cool. So I'm gonna select both of these real quick. And if you look at them, what comes with them, it's essentially if they created an empty and they added an XR controller, which says what hand it is, um, it adds a sphere collider and it creates a trigger. And that basically means 
the kind of physical influence of how big your hand is, they have made it a radius of, of 0 0.1. You don't want your hand to be a meter, so that makes a lot of sense. And then there is an XR Direct Interactor. So all of this stuff is pretty rad. But if we look at it, let's go to our right hand real quick. So if we look right here, everything says right hand, right hand, right hand, which is fine. And then if you go here, when it comes on the left hand, everything says right hand, which is gonna be a bummer. Last time we manually switched everything out and that's how I was taught. But I also found a new way that makes this a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this little toggle up here and we're gonna click that and we're gonna hit left controller and everything is switched out for us. It's pretty neat. So basically right now, let's go back to our hands and make sure that they're zeroed out and they are. Awesome. Okay, so now we have these components all set up. If we entered this world, if we waved our hands around, we wouldn't see anything because basically this these sphere colliders, they don't have any materials on them. There's really nothing on top of them. They are really essentially just air. So we need something to represent our physical hand. Um, but before we do that, actually, why don't we select the left hand and right hand together and then under XR Direct Interactor, let's click Hide Controller on Select. And this means every time we select our interactables, um, our hands will disappear so we know what we're holding. Okay, um, and also if you want, you can get fancy and you can add, you know, audio events on Enter and all this stuff and you can actually create your own audio clips. Okay, so now that we have all of that kind of set up, we need to create some hands. So let's, let's minimize our XR Origin real quick and let's right click. And, you know, usually what I would do is I would add a hand model so I can look like physical hands in the world. But today we're just going to use spheres because they're free and you don't have to spend any money and you don't have to download anything. So it's right click. Let's go to 3D object. Let's go sphere. And here's a sphere. Let's just uh, hit F2 or rename it. We'll call it hands. And let's just um, we're going to do a couple of things. Let's change this to point one. So I'm just going to. OK, that's good. I'm sorry. Could you say that? Shut up, Siri. Okay, so if I hit F, this is our hand. Cool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this sphere collider because it's gonna give us the business. And we're just gonna remove component. So we have this gray blob, but we wanna do a couple of different things to this thing. First, we want this not to be gray. So let's figure out how to create materials. So materials are essentially a way of painting an object and tinting an object in the world. This is a horribly simplistic summary of what a material is but I think it's sufficient for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to materials, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to create, and then we're gonna go to material. And we're gonna just gonna call this hands yellow, okay? So now what we have is this hands yellow, and let's just change this base map to a yellow, or whatever color you want. You can change it to whatever color you want. You can call it, make it yellow, pink, um, I'm gonna make it yellow because I, I, yeah, this is more of a macaroni, I would assume. So let's drag it to our hands. And now um, our sphere is yellow. Um, let's click our sphere again and make sure the position is zeroed out. Otherwise your hands are gonna be very, very far away. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is um, because we want this hand to be used on multiple hands, we're gonna need to make this a prefab. And what a prefab is, it's essentially a component that you can use over and over again, and you can you make a change to it once, and it ripples across your entire project. Think of Figma, think of code, very similar kind of things. So how we make a prefab in Unity, at first I like to be organized. So I'm, I right clicked on assets, I'm creating a new folder, and I'm just gonna call this prefabs. And then you just drag your object, which is this hands, into the prefabs and now it's a prefab and we're gonna just gonna delete it up there. And so if we double click the hands, this is everything we need from our prefab. It's basically, this is our hand. If we wanna change this color, the mesh, anything we want within this world, it will change everywhere else. So let's click back to scenes. Now let's open up our XR origin, select um, left hand, right hand. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this XR controller we're going to go all the way down and this is model prefab. What you're going to do is grab that puppy and slide it in there. Awesome possum. So now our hands are tied to our physical hands in that world. So let's see what happens when we put our headset on. Awesome. So we're traversing around. Here's my little hand. Here's my little hands. Hi. 
Hi, here's my little hands. Hey, everyone. These are pretty cool hands. Let's jump off. Ooh. So now let's create some interactables. So before we start, I'm going to grab our XR Origin. And I'm just going to bring this puppy. As much as I want to start on the ground, I'd rather start in a place that's cool. So I'm bring it up here. Okay, and I'm just gonna rotate this puppy. So now we're facing that direction. Awesome. If I hit the camera, it's showing us exactly where we're at. Okay, let's create some interactable things that we could be using with our hands. And again, they're called interactables. Okay, so what we're gonna do essentially is we're gonna create a table, and then we're gonna create a bunch of cubes on top of that table that we can play with and experiment with. So what we're gonna do is instead of creating a, a huge table from an extra cube, which you guys can do, be as creative as you want. I personally, I'm gonna go a little bit different here. So I'm gonna open up tools, pro builder, pro builder window. You guys may already have that for some reason it closed on me. Awesome, so now I have that. Okay, so now that I have my staircase here selected, so what I'm gonna do here is just grab um, this top area. So now I'm gonna extrude it. So I'm gonna hit extrude faces, W, and I'm gonna bring it up. So there's our table. Kind of a cool little table, you know. The reason why I wanted to show you that is just because how you can like use Pro Builder to create things instead of just throwing cubes everywhere. You don't have to do it. Um, this is actually a little bit high. If we look, it's a bunch of about a meter and a half. I'm sitting down, so we're just gonna bring it down to, you know, about half a meter. Eh, right there, I think it's fine. That's why these little lines right here that represent space are super important. Uh, like all like, so this is like almost a, almost a full meter. Okay, cool. So let's create some interactables on top of this puppy. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but we're gonna take advantage again of XR Origin and we're just gonna quickly build some things from what they offer us. And so the way we're gonna do that is let's just minimize our XR Origin, right click XR, grab interactable. So let's bring it up. I'm gonna zoom in. Awesome, so now we have this square. I'm just gonna duplicate this. Okay, so we have all of our little cubes, but not squares, they're cubes. So what we're gonna do now is make all of these cubes different materials and rename them. Um, what I would suggest is this, you know, I'm just gonna call like this one, for instance, uh, if it's grab interactable, I'm just gonna call it GI um, blue, right? And then so on and so forth and just rename them and then create a bunch of materials real quick. And then once you're done with that, we can continue. Okay, now that we have our four cubes, let's look what a grab interactable is. A grab interactable is essentially any kind of mesh or any kind of item that has, you know, a box collider or it has a form of collider on that. It has a rigid body and has an XR grab interactable on it. Now, you can bring in weapons, you can bring in household appliances, whatever. Essentially, you're gonna have to have a rigid body and a form of collider on them. And if you wanna interact with them in here, you need this XR Grab Interactable. Now, there's other frameworks that have their own definitions of what's interactable and what's not, but that's irrelevant at the moment. But what is always relevant is the form of movement types, right? So essentially, there's instantaneous, there's kinematic, and there's velocity tracking. Instantaneous kind of follows you around. It kind of, it will ignore, say, this table, but you can freely move. Kinematic essentially will interact with things, but it still kind of ignore things for the most part. And then you have velocity tracking, which will interact with all of the other rigid bodies and colliders in your scene. So let's, let's change this up a little bit. So let's just say this one right here, let's make the blue or your first cube. Let's change that to velocity tracking. Let's create the second cube and let's go to kinematic. And then we will do instantaneous for the pink or whatever you want to, whatever yours is. And then I'm just going to go back to velocity tracking for the black. Okay, so let's plug in. Okay, I think I underestimated how big I want this table. I'm at my desk right now. Okay, so here we go. So I should be able to stack like that. 
think this one's instantaneous. Oh, so you see how it, see how it's going through the table right here. And this one must this one must be velocity tracking. See see how it's not pink is. Okay okay so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna change out one of our hands with a ray interactor. Um, so there's multiple ways we can interact with things. Cool. So with all of our cubes, let's create a empty. Right click, create empty. I'm just gonna say cubes. And then we're gonna grab all of these puppies and just throw them into here. And now there, all of our cubes are within this empty. So let's go to our XR origin. And we have a right hand and our left hand. Let's use our right hand as a ray interactor. So what we're gonna do is gonna right click. We're gonna hit XR ray interactor. I'm just gonna call this right right hand ray. Good old right hand ray. Okay, so we go to right hand. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna toggle this off. Okay, so now that's toggled off. So now we only have right hand ray. Make sure everything is in the right place. Let's zero it out. Where's our left hand? It should be zeroed out. Yep, right hand ray is zeroed out. Um, and if you look within a right hand ray, we already know how all this stuff works. We could add our hand. You know what? Let's do it. Let's just add our hand um, back in there because I don't I don't want to be one handed. So let's go to our prefabs, our hands. Okay. So now is this minimize this? So we so with a with a ray um, interactor, we have a couple of different things. You have that XR ray interactor, right? If we look that look at that, it talks about the rotation speed, the translate speed, uh, the force talks about force grab, um, everything that's pretty sweet here. Like you can change out from like creating this a projectile or a bezier line, or you can just have it straight. We're gonna keep it straight. If you guys want me to dive into teleportation mechanics at some other time. Let me know in the comments below, but we're just going to keep this kind of basic as hell. And then we have a our XR interactor line visual and you can this here. You can change the width of a line, the color, um, all of that stuff. We're not going to get that fancy. So our right hand ray is now in. Let's see what happens when we have that. OK, so as you see right now, if I approach it, if I click it, I can essentially grab my objects and move them through space. And you see how that force speed, you can change all of that stuff if you desire. Now, when we start creating um, UI and stuff like that, we'll probably be using the Ray Interactor more than we probably would think. Okay, so now that we have two forms of interactors um, together, let's do a little bit of a bonus thing. Let's actually create some really, really basic UI. Yeah, I know, exciting. Now this isn't gonna be anything absolutely amazing, but it's gonna show you kind of like what you can get from the XR Interaction Toolkit and you know how to build up things in the future. And at some point we will talk about uh, menus and UI creation and how to manipulate them. But this kind of got me excited when I first found it. So let's just kind of minimize our um, our XR origin and let's right click and let's go to XR and let's go to UI canvas. Okay. And the canvas size is, you know, 100. Let's just say 500 by 500. And this is where, where is it? I think it should be huge now that I remember. So if we zoom out, this huge square is our canvas, right? So there's a couple, and so actually let's make this 1920 by 1080. So that's a huge canvas, right? If we right click our canvas and let's go to UI and let's go to panel and I'm just gonna make this pink. So that's the size of the canvas. And what is a canvas? Daniel, you keep talking about canvases. What the f is a canvas? Well, a canvas is essentially how we render out UI elements within Unity. And this canvas right now is huge, right? At some point soon, we're gonna talk about how that there's no such thing in XR as resolution. It's only field of view. So how does that work? You know, how does all of that stuff work, right? Because there has to be 
you know, uh, pixels per inch and stuff like that. And it's true, but things differ so much and things change so much that it's kind of pointless. So, so if we if we collect this canvas, I made it 1920 by 1080, and that's kind of close to how the Quest 2, um, how much resolutions per eye. I think the Quest 2 has a little bit higher resolution than that, but this is just like a general rule of thumb. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the scale and we're gonna point, hit zero. We're gonna hit zero, zero one, zero dot zero, zero one. And we're gonna hit F and here's our canvas, right? That's basically what we always wanna have in front of us, right? Let's just move this out a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit right click. We're gonna go to canvas and we are gonna click button. And this button is pretty tiny. Let's just make this five, 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 right? And there is our button. Now, if we look at our canvas, because we're getting this from XR Interaction Toolkit, what it's, it's doing a couple things automatically for us. Um, it's giving us a, uh, let's just minimize these. I don't think that's anything new. Um, it's automatically switching our, our render mode to world space. Originally, it's gonna come in a screen space camera, screen, um, screen space overlay, always switch it to world space. And then we're gonna, and then what it also does is that it adds a graphic ray, ray caster. It also gives us a track device graphic ray caster. Pretty sweet. So let's see what happens. So it's a very, very subtle hoverable, but as you see, I can use my ray caster to interact with this button. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. Let's dive back into the real world. Ah, that was a long tutorial compared to the others. Um, and trust me, I edited the goddamn thing. And normally I would have gutted maybe the XR rig portion, but the more I played with it, the more I realized how beneficial it would be for you guys to build an XR rig from the ground up. Um, so that's why I kept it in and I hope you found it beneficial. Let me know in the comments down below if you thought it was necessary. Now with all of that out of the way, you are a lot more independent in what you create and future tutorials um, could be based around user interfaces or user guidance or experience and stuff like that. And I can just push people back to these tutorials to get them set up instead of having to do it every time. I'm not sure if tutorials are your guys' bag. Um, if they are, let me know with a, like, a comment down below that you want more of them. Or maybe some of you guys just want more UX theory and deep dives. If that's the case, also let me know with the comments down below. Um, but really, I'm just trying to gauge exactly what my audience was. Um, it's still a new field and I'm super excited to explore it with you. So if you like this stuff, like, subscribe and comment. And until next time, plus my life.